When Loretta Jameson was in high school, she fell in love with the substitute English teacher. Her parents didn't like this, they got into a big fight over it, causing her to leave the house, and she hasn't seen them in 15 years. Now her parents finally want to meet their grandchildren, which may sound nice, but her parents are sociopaths. Alright, so the grandchildren in question here are Becca and Tyler, who are both little weirdos. Becca is a pretentious film bro, and Tyler came like straight out of Jack Harlow's asshole. You think I'm little, but last month I grew one inch and a quarter again. You think you're too good for me, but- No bars. None. Not a bar. M. Night Shyamalan deserves prison time for writing this character. Swerve, girl. Okay. So the kids take a train to see their grandparents, and Becca is documenting the entire trip. Also, it's worth mentioning that their mom has not fixed her relationship with their parents, and they reached out to her through the internet, whatever that means, so there have been no phone calls. She also told her kids that she didn't want them to go on the trip, but... They said they were gonna go anyway. They're brats, what can I tell you? You are a shit mom. This is why your kids are messed up. You tell skanks, I'm going through puberty! Ho. Oh, and she's also well aware that the kids won't be able to use their phones when they get there because it's in the middle of nowhere. Can't make this up. We then get introduced to good old Nana and Papa. That's the last time I'm saying that shit. And of course, they're weird. They're driving the kids to their house, sitting in their car like bots, just not saying anything to their grandchildren that they've never seen. Quiet time. When they get to the house, we learn that Tyler's rap name is T Diamond Stylus, and M. Night Shyamalan commits more atrocities. When a Hawaiian girl with a balance disorder said, You remind me of a pineapple upside down cake. <laughs> Alright, let's get to the weird stuff. The grandparents say bedtime is 9 30 because they're old, but at 10 23, Becca decides she wants cookies. So she leaves the room and sees her grandma walking around projectile vomiting. What do you think it smells like? This is strange, but the granddad says she just had the stomach flu. We move on. The next day, the kids decide to play hide and seek under the house because that's what their mom used to do. You better hide my ethnically confused friend. What? Then while Becca is hiding, the grandma just charges at her on all fours like a hungry little beast. Honestly, I think this is a pretty good jump scare. I wasn't really expecting it, and there's no cuts. Then she starts chasing them, and she's just doing way too much. She's giggling and growling like a freak. A guy like me would have started stomping the fuck out of her. Get you. Nana, stop, you play too much. Then she comes out from under the house with dirty ass knees, says she's gonna go make a pot pie, and walks away with half her ass out. Listen, low key? She kind of fire. I know you're judging this, but she has good energy and that pot pie is probably delectable. I feel like she don't really take showers like that though. Later that day, Tyler decides to see what's inside his grandparents' shed after he sees his grandpa going in and out of it several times. So he goes in and is like, whoa, it smells like ass in here and sees this suspicious pile of white bags with flies around them. He picks one up and discovers that it's a diaper with a fat, wet piece of shit in it. So the grandpa has been taking his boo-boo diapers and just throwing them in the shed. First of all, this man is a real shitter, cause this pile is crazy. Why is he like the clam from Spongebob? This is insane. Second of all, this shit is damn near diarrhea, so I know his stomach be going crazy. And he probably just sits there and acts like nothing is happening. The grandma explains this by saying that the grandpa has incontinence and that he hides his diapers in the shed because he's ashamed. Does this look like something a person with shame would do? That night, while the kids are trying to sleep, they hear noises outside their room. They go to check it out and see their grandma scratching a door while naked. Wait, hold on. Why is she thick? And she's so freaky. I made your cheddar biscuits, dear. I really like it. Next, the grandma tells Becca that she accidentally messed up her laptop camera by getting biscuit batter on it. Not the whole laptop, specifically the camera, which was of course on purpose. I'm not really sure why you wouldn't just break the laptop at that point, like they can still Skype their mom. Anyways, the kids think this is weird, but they brush it off and the visit continues. Becca is washing dishes with her grandma when she asks her to do this. Would you mind getting inside the oven to clean it? And she proceeds to make Becca fully get inside the oven. 
I don't really know what to say to this. Like at least close the door and act like you're gonna turn it on. Like what kind of bit is this? Later that night, the kids hear weird noises outside of their room again, but unfortunately this time grandma is just frolicking around the house. She moves so elegantly. I just wanna run around the house and play tag with her. Be a little rascal. Then the grandparents' behavior gets increasingly more deranged. Grandma is just sitting in a rocking chair, laughing aggressively. I have the deep darkies. Nana? Nana! Oh, hush up, Grandma. Grandpa is sucking off a shotgun. There's weirdness all around. So Tyler and Becca have seen enough at this point and decide to set their camera out in the living room to catch their grandma's antics during the night in 4K. And yeah, she's a real geeker. Her code literally starts glitching. But it only takes her like 30 seconds to find the camera, so clearly they did a terrible job of hiding it. She takes the camera, grabs a knife, and tries to go off the kids, but they were smart enough to lock the door. So I guess she just gives up and goes back to sleep. And for some reason, she puts the camera back where it was. She's not good at being a psychopath. Also, the grandpa explains her weird behavior at night as sundowning, and I mean, sure, but she's also just crazy. After seeing the footage of grandma tweaking, the kids Skype their mom and say they need to leave. And when they put the camera on their grandparents who are outside, their mom says, Those aren't your grandparents. <laughs> this could have all been avoided if she would have just set aside her differences with her parents for a single week. Like just go with the kids, or maybe at least show them what their grandparents look like before they go. Also, in case you were wondering, this twist gets hinted at throughout the movie as we see different people trying to check in on the real grandparents because they hadn't seen them lately. I think this is one of M. Night Shyamalan's more earned twists because there's a natural buildup to it and it actually elevates the plot. We continue. The mom tries to call the cops, but they don't answer, so she decides to drive there and keep calling them on the way. And as we know, the kids can't call the cops because they have no service, which their mom knew would be the case. And now they just gotta survive. Grandma does her little silly oven joke again. This will just take a second. The kids try to leave and see a person hanging from a tree. This is one of the people who tried to visit the real grandparents. And they play Yahtzee. During the game, Grandpa shits himself, and Becca decides to go into the basement where the fake grandparents told her not to go earlier in the movie because of mold. But she thinks her real grandparents are down there. Now I feel like this is super unnecessary because there's like no upside. Even if you find your grandparents, what are you gonna do? If they're not dead, they're at least in terrible shape and probably can't help you much. You might as well just act normal and chill until your mom or the cops get there. But fuck that, I guess. In the basement, she finds her grandparents dead, and also clothes that suggest that the two random old heads came from the local mental hospital. I retract all previous statements I made about the grandma. My publicist has informed me that they may have been out of line. So fake grandpa finds Becca in the basement and locks her in a room with fake grandma. He then goes to Tyler, takes his shitty diaper, and slaps it on his face. Imagine this man's dookie chunks touching your lips. Meanwhile, fake grandma is more deranged than ever and tries to attack Becca, who stabs her multiple times with a shard of glass. She then goes to help Tyler, who's once again getting the diaper rubbed in his face, and they team up and give him a nice beating. That man Tyler really got a shit diaper slapped in his face. I understand his passion here. Then they run outside and the cops get there at the exact same time. So deranged. 